This is part four of the presentation on equity investments, and this covers accounting for change in percentage ownership, other comprehensive income as part of the subs income, and what happens if we sell and we have, are using the equity method. Okay, understanding the financial reporting consequences for, again, a change to the equity method, reporting income from other sources, then continuing operation, and sale of equity method investments. Reporting a change to the equity method. You report a change to the equity method if an investment that was recorded using the fair value method reaches the point where significant influence is established. When an investment qualifies for the equity method, the investor adds the cost of acquiring additional interest in the investee to the current basis and adopts the equity method. Now this is a new change. They used to make you go back and do the change retroactively. No longer true, especially since we're adjusting to fair market value. So when working problems, assume that the initial investment of under 20% has already been adjusted to fair value at the time of the additional stock purchase. So now let's take a look at an example. A company on January 4 1st of 2016 purchased 10% of Little for $100,000. Subsequently, on January 1st, 2017, Big purchased an additional 30% of Little's outstanding voting stock for $360,000. Little had a net book value of $900,000 on January 1st, 2017, and any excess was attributed to a patent with a 10-year life and therefore they achieved the ability to significant influence the investor's decision making. Income for small in 2017 was $120,000 and they paid dividends of $40,000. Now first, what would be the adjustment 2017 beginning retained earnings? Under the new rule, we go prospectively, don't go retroactively. So that's a new thing. Two, what is the investment income for 2017 and the balance in the investment account? How much should be reported as equity income for 2017? In 2017, what is the total fair value? It was 1.2 million, which means the 10% is worth 120,000. Now we can determine our amortization. Our consideration is the 360 plus the 120 because we assume the 10% was already adjusted to fair market value, divided by our 40% ownership, which means 100% is 1.2 million, less the book value of 900,000 tells us that we have excess over book assigned to the patent of 300,000, divided by 10 years means at 100%, we're gonna amortize $30,000 a year. So now, what is the investment income? At 40%. Net income would be 44,000, which is 40% of 110. We would take 40% of the amortization. And the investment income for pick from the equity, uh, or from our equity investment in the sub would be 32,000. Remember, dividends under the equity method are not reported as income by the parent. Instead, they are a reduction in the investment account. What's the balance in our investment in little? It would be our 10% at fair, fair value, our 2017 investment, plus the net income at 40%, less the amortization, less the dividend. So our ending balance ends up being 496000 Now let's go to another topic. What happens if we get income from sources other than operations? So. When net income includes elements other than operating income, these elements should be presented separately on the investor's income statement. Examples would be discontinued operations or other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income is divided as revenue, expenses, gains, and losses that under GAAP are included in comprehensive income, but excluded from net income. Now, it used to be adjustments to fair value for available for sale securities was also included as part of other comprehensive income. That is no longer true. Now, the only thing that is included in there are accumulated derivative, 
net gains and losses, foreign currency translation adjustments, and certain pension adjustments. Equity method accounting requires that the investor record its share of investee, OCI, and irregular items traditionally found in net income. AOCI, it accumulated other comprehensive income, is reported in the stockholders' equity and represents a source of change in the investment company net assets that is recognized under the equity method. So now let's look at an example. We have invested, we own 40% of another company's stock, and we they pay dividends of 30000 Also, Barney has 40000 in net profit, which doesn't include 70000 in other comprehensive loss. What would be the journal entry to recognize the equity income? Remember, we don't care about the dividends. Those are a reduction in the investment account. So, other comprehensive loss would be uh, 28,000, which is our share of the 28,000. Equity income would be 16, and the investment account would be reduced by 12,000. So remember, if you're asked a question on your homework, which we will, what would be the equity earnings when you have a other comprehensive income? It would only be the 16,000. The 28,000 dollar share would be part of other comprehensive income. So remember that when you're working your homework. Now the last thing we're going to cover is what happens if we sell part of our equity investment. An equity method continues to be applied up to the date of the transaction. At the transaction date, a prospective amount of the investment account is removed. If significant influence loss, no retroactive adjustment is made but the equity method is no longer applied. So let's look at our example. In this example, the company owns 40% of 100,000 shares of little company. 40,000 shares were acquired several years ago for 200, and they now have our investment balance account on January 1 is 320,000. On July 1st of 2017, Big elects to sell 10,000 or 25% of his investment for 110,000 in cash, thereby reducing the ownership to 30%. During the first six months of 2017, Little Company reported income of 70,000 and distributed cash dividends of 30,000. What is the journal entry to record the sale? First, we look at the balance in the investment account on January 1. We would record our share of the income for this first six months and our share of the dividend. And now we have a new balance, and this would be as of July 1st. And we would take that times 25%, and this is the amount that would be credited to the investment account. So now we can do our journal entry. We would record our cash of 110, which is a consideration. We reduce our investment account by 84,000 and record a gain of 26,000. And that concludes this presentation. Thank you.